Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 13th of October 2024. We're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 11th of October. Gold rose while silver fell. There's no doubt geopolitical tensions are playing a part in the recent demand for these precious metals. There will be no interest rate decision until November. So what do we expect to happen in the interim? Well, let's take a look. Now first, just a quick reminder, we've set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter, covering a whole array of financial topics. We've placed a link in the description box and comment section below for those who have not as yet joined that channel. Now let's look at precious metals. Gold rose $3 last week, rising from $2,654 to $2,657, having been as high as $2,661 and as low as $2,605, a rise of just 0.1%. Gold spread between high and low was just $56. Last weekend, we said gold would trade between $2,600 and $2,700, which it did very comfortably. In sterling terms, gold was up £13, closing at £2,037. And in euros, it closed up €10 Euros at €2,431. Euros. Silver fell 40 cents, falling from 32.28 to $31.88, having hit a high of 32.41 and a low of $30.16. Looking a little hairy then. A fall of 1.2%. The difference between its high and low was $2.25. Now, last weekend we predicted silver would trade between 31 and 33.50 with a lowest outlier of $30.50. And whilst it closed well within our predictive range, it did fall slightly below our outlier low on Tuesday, but remained there for just a couple of hours and then bounced back a little. In sterling terms, silver closed at $24.20, that's down 41 pence on the week, and in euros it closed at 28.91 euros, that's down 0.52 euros. Gold to silver ratio rose from 82.2 to 1 to 83.3 to 1. Bitcoin currently stands at $62,809. That's up just shy of $800. Now, US equities were higher. Dow Jones up 511 points at 42,863. The S&P 500 up 64 points at 5,815. And the Nasdaq Composite up 205 points at 18,342. However, the UK FTSE 100 was down 27 points at 8,253. Now, oils continue to rise, albeit modestly, after last week's considerable rise due to geopolitical tensions. Brent crude was up 99 cents, just shy of a dollar, at $79.04, and WTI crude closed up $1.18 at $75.56 per barrel. Dollar index was also up 0.37 at 102.89. Now, last week, we suggested that you look at the minutes from the last FOMC meeting, which were revealed on Wednesday, but to pay particular attention to the CPI report on Thursday, where market expectations were that the year-over-year -year CPI would fall from 2.5 to 2.3, and the year-over-year -year core CPI to hold at 3.2. Well, the reality was that inflation was slightly higher than these estimates. The reality is that the year-over-year -year CPI came in at 2.4 and the core CPI at 3.3. This was the first increase in core CPI for 18 months. Now, Friday's PPI figures, though, were lower than anticipated, coming in at 0.1% for September, and the year-over-year -year figures reducing from 1.9 to one8 the PPI appears to confirm inflation is still fairly low and stable, and analysts argue that US wholesale prices point to subdued inflation in the economy, 
suggesting that the larger than expected increase in consumer prices is unlikely to last. We can see that the gold and silver price began rising on Friday and continued that rise after the PPI figures were announced. The general consensus is that the Fed is widely expected to keep cutting interest rates even if inflation remains at current levels. What's less clear is whether the Fed would pause in November to wait for more data or reduce rates again. Now this coming week, the only data of significant importance are the retail sales figures due on Thursday for September, with analysts expecting a positive 0.3% up from 1.1% in August, and a steady 0.1% rise if automobiles are extracted from the calculation. Now, despite gold's initial pullback in price towards the middle of last week, it does appear buyers begin to appear. The concern about rising inflation was then really ignored as interest rate cuts still appear to be on schedule, though we have said numerous times do not expect more than another 0.25% cut this year. Gold does seem to have some support at $2,600, but if that does break to the downside, then close to $2,550 will be the next major support level. The rise on Friday and closing just $4 off its week's high is quite bullish, and a number of analysts are expecting a rising follow-through into the beginning of next week. It's clear to us that the interest rate impact is weakening compared with the rise in geopolitical tensions. And it's sad to say, but if these tensions increase, it will be good for coal. But if they begin to dissipate, what we call the war premium will reduce and we could see gold prices fall back until the November interest rate decision. That said, just today it's announced the US officials think Israel will target Iran's military and energy sites, and so those tensions, at least for now, are likely to remain elevated, if not increase. Silver does seem to have support at the $30 level, and being an industrial metal gains when lower interest rates occur, but suffers if the global economy is threatened. Like gold, it recovered much ground on Thursday through Friday, though it is underperforming its gold's cousin in the last seven days. We can see an upside for silver eventually reaching $34 to $35 by the end of the year. But the question is, where is it going short term? If it were not for the current geopolitical tensions, we would expect gold and silver to fall between now and the November interest rate decision. However, those tensions are escalating and keeping precious metal prices higher than we would expect them to be. There is still mileage to the upside very short term as long as these tensions continue. Very long term, both gold and silver have quite an attractive outlook too. Our forecast for this week is predicated on those tensions continuing and potentially increasing. With this in mind, we expect gold to trade between $2,625 and 2,725, with 2,600 and 2,750 as outliers, and silver to trade between $30.50 to 33, with $30 to 33.50 as outliers. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. We'd appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. Pop on over to Finances Do Matter and subscribe there. Have a great week ahead, but as we've said, watch out perhaps for retail sales. Otherwise, it's all geopolitics. See you soon.